the Yet Way Up of Scott and Toby. We're talking on children season one. This is episode two, Child of Cat. We're talking pretty heavy spoilers. Take this as your warning. But if that's okay with you, continue on, and I'll see you on the other side. We're moving on. So, <laughs> the children, uh, on children, episode two, Child mm. of Cat. Child of Cat. Mm-hmm. I'm Where just going to start? get it out of the way and we'll get the Where names out of the way because I think they do deserve that. Person. Yes, they do deserve They Yeah. Do you want to go with the names? No, because I'm getting all the pronunciations wrong. Jun Yen's mother. Jun <laughs> yeah, Kun Yen. Wait, who's that played by? Uh, Hissin Ling Shun. Nice. And then you've got Chun Ku Yen himself, who is the mm, kid. The main star. Which, um, yeah, the main star of the story. And his name is Hishu Fu Li. Lu Chi Wei. Or is played by Yun Ping Huang. And who is that? She's the tru- second troubled child oh, who introduces well, the parallel yes. dimension. Yes. We'll get onto that. Mm-hmm. Then you have the teacher is played by Kami Chang, and she is known as Teacher Shan Shan. Okay. And this episode is called Child of Cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know who's written by, but someone was channeling their inner Hiroku uh-huh. no Hamu. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you think, yeah. oh, maybe, maybe it's subtle. And sometimes they'll like, rack focus onto it one of his It is based, based on a novel by Xiao Li Hu. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I, mm. I guess I just assume they're all original material for this anthology, but certainly the the director is channeling his inner uh, Hiroki yeah. Murakami. Yeah. Um, if, if there's it's interesting. A, I think there's a bingo of Hiroki stuff, and it's like parallel universes, cats, precocious children, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, three bright moons, and like I said, there's a there's even a scene in case you're not quite sure where they pull focus onto one of his books, uh, IQ eighty four. Oh, really? Massively. About parallel universes and the moon is the giveaway because there's two moons. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I, well, see, there's a connection that I didn't realise was because I've read, have I read? I've read his some of his books, haven't I? Like he's uh, the guy that wrote Norwegian Wood and yes. uh, what I think about when I'm jogging and mm-hmm. running and all of that. So I've read that one and I've read. Oh, what God, Cat on the Clock- shore. No, Clockwork, Wind so, Up Bird. Oh, okay. Chronicles. Nice. And another one as well. Uh, beast of um, books. Do yeah, you like your characters see. to drink coffee and listen to jazz in detail? Is, <laughs> is the author for you? But yes. so, yeah, I, I think it was just nods to him for, for right. obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. So we start off with well, a let's family. Just, just before oh. we do start off, um, we you didn't like the first episode at all, did you? No, I, it was just dreamy mm-hmm. in, a, in an exhausting way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think if our listeners might be able to parallel it, and I don't think this is a good example because it was really su- successful. Have you seen Tales from the Loop? I have. Yes, the Amazon series. I it watched one a... episode, and it felt mm-hmm. like four hours long. I think <laughs> did, didn't it? Sleep. <laughs> and that reminded me of this in that dreamy style. And that's not to yeah. say sometimes it's not good or bad, and maybe it's the state I'm in. But mm-hmm. my God, wake up, Phil! Yeah. <laughs> Slap yourself in the face, splash some water, have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah have a coffee is definitely the answer <laughs> did you think that dreamy style was carried over into the second episode no i i think i like this episode more than the first episode this one that's was... what i thought might happen <laughs> and this is going to make for interesting dichotomy because i freaking hated this episode. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a bore fest oh really um, well wow. oh it's just diabolical I definitely but, thought there was reasons you might hate it, which we'll definitely get onto. Oh, uh, screenwriters God. advice 101 uh, regarding characters and animals and the harm mm-hmm. done upon them. But we'll get into that. Um, oh, this one felt geez. more down to earth than the first one. That dreamy haze I felt was totally lifted. Mm. I didn't. Yeah, it, it, it felt less like a Black Mirror episode or an attempt at a Black mm. Mirror episode. This one did definitely. Maybe more knowing grounded. a bit more what to expect helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly just from reading the little blog i thought you would dig it i think i was going to text you again oh i think you'll like the next one yeah i thought i was going to like the next one I, I read, into I read a the... parallel universe and, and finds a bag of cats does he does he 
I don't remember him ever slipping into a parallel universe. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that. What is the Back point of, of a parallel universe when it reflects exactly what you're doing in your own universe? <laughs> oh like, my gosh. I feel okay. like the filmmakers forgot what they yeah. were doing. They're, they're, they're like, right, we've got a bag of cats, we've got a parallel. Right, there's the cats, let's go. Oh shit, there was a parallel universe. Just, just, tint, <laughs> just tint stick him in the blue. corner and make him smile tint, manically. Tint that blue. <laughs> so. We open up on the family, and they're around yes. a huge table, extended. Aunts, uncles, nephews, mm-hmm. nieces, mothers, fathers, the, the main child. Let's face yeah. it. With, oh, I don't know. Can you tell me his name again? I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, Chung. Chung, Chung okay. Ku Yen. Chung's we'll easy him. enough. We'll call and him Chung. Chung is... We're sort of centered on Chung, and he's pretty awkward, pretty geeky. Yeah. And the family are he's just... sweating. The family are just kind of sucking each other's cock. Oh God, aren't they? Just it's one. Of, it's like it's almost like hyper realism where they're just all like, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like here's to our our niece who got a grant for university, who got these awards, who upped her mm. grades. Yay! And the family does this yeah. like yeah, cheer yeah, her love, on. Thing. Love chance. Love <laughs> love love chant. Love chant. Yeah. Love it chant, isn't really right. like it. <laughs> Arguably, it's kind of nice if it wasn't yeah. Chung sat in the middle. Yeah, and we kind of go around the family. I guess we get a little hint at the dad, matriarch mm-hmm. dude of the family, who is wheelchair bound and suffering from some kind of dementia. Or no, yeah, I, he's like he's the, old, the, yeah, the, and he's the, the just old, slipping old into guy, like yeah. very quietness. And Chong is kind of whispering to his mom, "Hey, Ma, I got to do a number two pretty badly. I need, I need to do, Mom. <laughs> and mom is." I guess just off the offset, we can kind of see she's not in this family. Yes, no, kind of she's nice. well, well, well. Good filmmaking oh. here. Like everyone is well dressed. Mm-hmm. Just they have a genuine smile, and although it's not nice, they are they're showing off, and you can see her her smile is kind of jaded. And yeah, yeah, kind of she's fitting in. She she's has there's an, an element of um, the black sheep, mm, and she got nothing to brag about. Yeah. And as the the scene moves forward, the kid just just I don't know, it's like something out of an Ace Ventura or comedy film, mm-hmm. really has to poop, <laughs> like badly. And it's and it's clearly it's it's clearly um, slightly mentally challenged. I would say you could it comes across <laughs> that way to me anyway. Sorry, I wasn't but, laughing at that. I thought you were looking for the politically correct term of like turtle heads. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, the polite no. way to say he's turtle heading. Yeah, no, but he's he's obviously not all there because just the way that he's handling this this I need a poo problem. Okay, I guess I this... thought it it showed how much he's in thrall in thrall in in command of his mum. Mm. Yeah, like they, they, definitely, yeah, definitely. definitely. She keeps swatting awkward. him down. Yeah. Stay where you are. Show your respect. Mm. Clap when everybody else is clapping. And I guess um, he's around 14, 15. Yeah, probably right? around yeah, 15, I'd say. Because mm-hmm. I guess, again, this, this anthology is all about kids kind of in mm-hmm. that same age range. And so coming up to a big exam. And so the family are like, hey, aren't we forgetting someone? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, the kids. And they don't really sure. have anything to celebrate for him. But I guess they're no. just like, yeah, he's trying hard. Just yeah. give him love, love, love. Yeah, love chant, love chant, love mm. chant. And he's just... And the, the camera's sort of like fish eyeing <laughs> on the kid, really like holding in. Struggling, Oop. sweat pouring down his head and then... Yeah. And the whole family is just looking at him chanting and he can't hold it. No. He, he sort of lets one go and we get the fart noise. Mm. And then... I, I thought it would be kind of obvious for everyone around the table. Yeah, but what just happened? It kind of plays out comedy, right? This whole scene, yeah. really. A- apart from the kids, man. I'm going to talk about yeah. the kids acting later. I, I thought it was flipping great. Yeah, I um, agree with that. Everyone's like, oh, what's that smell? Is it dad? No, it's not yeah, dad. They all look it, at the old guy. <laughs> it slowly comes across to like, oh, like God, yeah. he, he doesn't got good grades and he can't even not crack his pants around the table. Yeah. Um, that's our intro. That's our family. Yes, I hope you like is. them because we're going to be following them for the next hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Not your regular 45 minute programming. No, oh, no. Double no this is an hour and a half's <laughs> worth of torture. And in case you thought this one might be more lighthearted because we're starting off with sort of poop, poop 
good jokes and stuff. And... No, 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 no. We cut no. to the kid getting berated and physically beaten by his mm-hmm. tutor. Mm-hmm. He's just like, I can't do anything with you. I quit. You're and a lost mom, cause. And the mom is basically beat him harder. Don't leave. Yeah. We need Don't you. leave. Here, take this whacking stick and just beat the shit out of him. Beat the intelligence into him. Mm-hmm. And more beatings, more beatings. He will get there. He's got, yeah. Don't yeah, give up on him, be basically. Hard to get the jokes out of this one, Toby, but there's a lot. There's, of there's just no joking. <laughs> and I, I guess the there's a cool fest. character as a handyman trying to fix leaks in the kitchen. So the kitchen is all kind of covered up in plastic sheets. Yeah, they live in it's, it's a very small apartment, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. like a, a, a almost a two, three room apartment. You've got the kitchen, living room, dining room, everything in one room, and then two bedrooms, basically. Yeah, uh, and I it. guess this is the nice class shift to episode one. We are like yeah. a working class mum here. Yeah. And like all the pots and pans are, are stacked high in the kitchen. and Yeah, it's it's, it's small um, living. Everything's covered up by plastic uh, and... because of the leaking roofs and everything like that. Because I think we get the hint it's consistently leaking. That guy's been there yep. back and forth. Yeah, um, it just keeps happening. Exactly, a new a new leak will spring elsewhere. But the, the, <laughs> and, and this is all down to the fact that the husband, or the the the, the Chung's father, doesn't actually live. No, the um, mum is in kind of denial that he's mm-hmm. basically left her. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I don't know if they still play it for appearances with the family, which we can come into later as it comes up. Mm. But so you know, the, I like how the mum sort of says, "You're going to end up like this guy in front of the guy who's yeah." In the room. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy is kind of cool. He's like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll no, he is. Can, send him to me. I need an apprentice. But just to get out of the house, the two go up to the roof because they're checking for leakages, and the moon is huge. Yeah, not blue, is it? No, definitely not blue. It's it just very, been, very, like, very, it's very big. Messed up on the grading there. Um, <laughs> the kid, tr- sort of tranced by the moon, steps up on a bench mm-hmm. and is just stood at the edge. Um, not quite manacle smiling yet. No, but it's like he, he, he feels like to me, it felt like he was going to throw himself off. Yeah, but I don't um, think he ever was. I guess there's that selling <laughs> that fear, right? Like he just zoned yeah. out and he stood onto the edge. And I guess we never know. I guess you're saying like it seemed doubtful, but this the mm-hmm. fact that he just stood on a ledge for no reason. Mm-hmm. But so they hear this meowing, yes. And this guy is is it's the mother up there at this point. Is the mother? No, is that I, I think she's downstairs, right? Yeah, and it's just but the I'm guy, the the, 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 the roof fixing. Yeah, the roof fixing guy and Chun up mm-hmm. on the roof, staring at the moon. So they find a box of cats, and it's like cool. And the kid smiles. Yeah. So, hey, cats! Who doesn't love cats? Exactly, kittens. Parallel universe, chunks. Apparently, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so they take this box of cats down. Say, like, hey, Ma. It's about Look what five, I found. Four of them. I don't know. They're pretty yeah, skinny. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few of them. They're at that age where it's a little painful to look at them. Like they just look like they're in pain. You know? Yeah. You get that yeah, they're really kittens. Young they're animals? new. New. They're yeah, just beyond the newborn kittens. Basically. A couple of days, right? Like their eyes are open, but yeah. The mum is kind of happy, mm-hmm. and it's like you know, let's keep them. And mm-hmm. throughout this, we're going to get these brutal moments of the kid just reaching out to be loved by his mum mm-hmm. at all costs. And the mum just can't quite. There's moments where she gets there. Yeah. But overall, she will basically take it all of her life, the, the, the crap of her life, out on yeah. him. Yeah. And Everything that's watching. happening in her life is his fault. Mm-hmm. So, where does that take us? We, I guess the next day, like he, he leans out. To, oh, I guess, like I said, he leans out to her and she will sort of like. What, like, hey, mom, we don't need dad, right? And he's like, What, you mm-hmm. want him to leave me? And sort of smacks him down. Mm-hmm. Um, you need those... to try harder, be be better, do harder, mm. work harder, study, study, go in your room and study, like, he stop is the talking to of me. The class type grade. Mm-hmm. And this, is, this isn't like episode one where it was a fancy school. This is like your, your public school. Yeah. Um, so I guess the next day he's kind of getting on with his mum when they're just talking and, and mm-hmm. she's making him eat because he's kind of skinny. Mm-hmm. And he goes to school, and I guess he just feels sick because she just makes him eat a big sandwich or something. Th- or? Yeah, it's either that or it's food poisoning. I couldn't quite figure out, but basically, he has an adverse reaction to the food mm. that she's force feeding him um, or making him eat because he is very skinny as well. Mm. And he stumbles across this fence, and he's sort of, he's sort of looking into a warehouse, 
and he mm-hmm. sees this girl his age, his one of his classmates, just sort of chase this boy in and just pound on him. Mm. Uh, got like, beat him senseless. Yeah, it's a, it's a brutal attack. It's not like a a bullying school thing. It's a, it's a you know knuckle dusters. Down some pain. <laughs> yeah, and for a little girl, she's vicious. Yeah, he runs. She sees him, but he runs away, and they go to class. And during this, I guess the mum is sort of like we sh- we get to see some of her life, and she's is, is not happy with her either. She's basically used no. by her family. That's it. Yeah, the, yeah. Like, one hey, of the sisters you, comes over, doesn't can she? You come around and help us out with this. We can't for, for our own reasons. And she just to be accepted. She basically always says yes to the family, mm-hmm. her brother-in-law, her sister-in-law. And I think this happens throughout, but but I, I guess I'll sum it up now. Like she she's like come over and, and bathe the dad yeah he's i kind of thought he wasn't too bad he was just sort of making splashes it was kind of fun yeah Not although he did try and kiss her and <laughs> oh yeah i forgot about that <laughs> but it's not her dad right it's like sorry no. you guys are young kind of wealthy you, you've got the time for this and she's a busy mom mm-hmm. but she still did it uh, and she just takes on these little tasks that and she sort of does it with a smile that even yeah. she knows she's being conned she yeah, just can't yeah. say no for like this is the family she wants to be a part of and so the kid oh talk me through him i guess she meets the girl that was mm. pounding the other kid yeah they're, the, they're yeah, just the blue... walking and she says i've seen a blue moon and basically... you've seen it too or something like that isn't it yeah they have a discussion about the big moon that wasn't blue that is but that's meant guess to be blue when when he saw her pounding on the other kid he had these weird flashes of rain falling mm-hmm. that were sort of like blue, like everything was tinted blue, but you don't really see what that is, right? Yeah. Because it would flash into basically what felt like the same scene, blue. Yeah. Back. <laughs> so, yeah, I yeah. don't know. We'll, 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 and I think that's, that, that's the main thing that I, I don't know. Because <laughs> she me. basically, she's walking and talking with him and says, I need to sacrifice the lowest graded kid to get my results up in the yeah. parallel universe. To get and top I, results in class, I need to basically kill... into the parallel universe and pound the crap out of the kid with the lowest grade, which is now him, because we're, we're yeah. to later. Because she's like, how did you get less results than this other guy? Mm-hmm. And then she's like, yeah, i got to pound you in the parallel universe. So it cuts to this blue world, and then she starts pounding, but it cuts back to the colour world, and she's just pounding him. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know what the parallel universe is. No, I didn't. This is going to come back. Every time we slip into it, he's literally doing it in the real world. Yep. The, if, if she beats up this kid in the blue world, she's just beating him up in the real world, and he's bruised, and the effects mm-hmm. are felt in the real world. Basically, meandering the parallel universe is utterly pointless. Yeah, I just did. I, To be As honest, I, I missed the transitions between the two worlds. The only time I knew that we were probably in a parallel world was when he was doing the manacle smile. Right. Or so, hovering in the room, top of a corner or something like that. And looking I do really have tall. a take from it, but we'll get there when things get mm-hmm. more extreme in a bit. Because they switch, don't they? This, yeah, at this she point, he suddenly him, gets... And she's pounding him. And then he manages to get on top of her. Things turn a bit blue. The... Yeah, and he beats he gets the shit a manacle out of her. smile, and he, he pounds her, like with a brick. He's... Mm. <laughs> Yeah, he puts a brick to her head. <laughs> right. And I guess we're left confused because it's like, well, that's too much, but she was beaten on kids. I don't mm-hmm. know who to root for. We've got another episode. Like, at least in the last episode, it was quite clear we liked the kid. Yeah. But this kid just unhinged pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> they all do. So we cut to, like, the parents in hospital. And I guess it's almost quite a comical scene. Mm-hmm. How could you how could you beat a girl? And then it's like, yeah. no, we've seen the camera. She was beating him. He was protecting himself. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that scene, really. I the guess the, the, father, the father's like, my son would never do this. She must have done something to him. Mm. And she's like, how could you say this about my daughter? And then this police woman comes in and says, yes, it's true. She was beating on him first. Um, and he's like, thank you very much. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. And then takes... Mm. John and his and John's mother away, and sends him takes him back to the to the leaky flat again. Yeah, and so in a roundabout way, the kid realizes 
that you're going to get a sign from the parallel universe of mm -hmm. that that was her thing she was told yeah. to beat up the lowest kid as sacrifice to the parallel the blue moon and she tells him that you will find your blue moon message basically telling you what to do to be um, able to get what you need from i don't really remember or see what that message was no explicitly it don't, it does i don't remember ever being him being told to do but, what he does and what does he do toby he kills kittens he starts killing the little kittens he kills the little kittens and buries them and turns them into flowers right and to get top marks mm -hmm. what's the f <laughs> i'm right. sorry what so, this is where i think the parallel universe comes into play in that it's like a psychosis mm -hmm. it's like uh, because i guess we watched that last episode and it was literal uh, a satirical metaphor whatever but in this case it's like no no, no there's no blue moon parallel universe it's he slips into that as a as a mental escapism to do horrific things yeah as a desperate belief attempt to up his grades because he's willing to do anything not even for the grades but to please his mama yeah to please his mum and and dad and it falls a little part a little bit that the little girl is doing it and they do kind of make it explicit in my opinion yeah to say that it was like it was all in his head because because we know the girl wasn't in his head and she's got something but yes yeah. it's just a yeah. sort of way of being to explain it he does have, he does get a new tutor at the same time so I don't understand. Mm. I just don't understand. <laughs> Toby, How, screenwriting yeah. 101. If we are mm. to like a character, yeah. what should that character never do? Is it kill people? Yeah, well, that's generally a good, a good starting point, but definitely don't kill animals. Right. I'm pretty sure every class will say that the average cinema girl will forgive someone for murdering a person. Mm -hmm. but torturing and murdering in animals basically means you never get on board with that person exactly that ever and again i was never on board with this kid <laughs> he just annoyed the shit out like, of me audiences will be happy for you to kill people all you like mm -hmm. but like the net the name of the netflix documentary don't f with cats yeah yeah i mean fools to them because they are going to try and give this kid a kind of redemptive sympathetic arc Despite the fact, I mean, it's not one kitten, is it? The, the whole box no, no. There's the, 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 the a whole box full of them, and by the end of it, <laughs> there's no cats left. But I guess it kind of works. His grades do go up. Yeah, and he but pleases the said, mother, and he pleases the father. Mm, as uh, you said, he's got a tutor. He gets a yeah. new tutor who is sympathetic. It doesn't believe in beating, and is a great influence. Yes, she is. She's really good, actually. She you, she was probably one of the best things about this this episode for me was that. Her teaching style, her approach, her understanding, her ability to see what's going on around him and change I those dynamics. She was like a fairy godmother and she wasn't going to be real by the end mm. because of how brutal everyone else is. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what happens next? Can you take us through the next few scenes? Well, uh, so his, his, his grades improve um, and the father starts to come round more often, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. If I remember rightly, and he shares, he he stays for like an evening meal and eats the cooking that the mother's constantly doing for everyone, and then he basically, from what I gather, oh, there's a, there's a section where they're on the the, the 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 him and the other girl that has the parallel universe ability, they're on the roof of a, oh, of a really God, tall yeah, building, I but I can't, I don't understand why they're up there. The power has shifted to him and she no longer has access and because she then gets locked in a cupboard by a, a group of lads mm. and she just looks very disheveled and lost and confused and like i don't know yeah i, I, I couldn't guess I quite make my head or tell. because she's ahead of him like we didn't see her at her lowest moment we saw her when she was riding the blue moon as it were which which he is mm -hmm. now at and just feeling the power but mm. we're seeing her come through the other side and basically be more of a person and feel regretful and like jesus what this is effed up what is going on yeah and we're seeing her trying to like i guess she wanted some punishment from him I, I don't know if she was sort of looking for some punishment 
Right, okay. I think that's kind of how I took it. And that she's I, I... basically like come out the other side of it. And we're not uh, quite understanding okay. it, but we're going to follow him through it. And kind of Interesting. in like, the same position. That's what I got from that. I, but you I, might be right also. I don't know what I got from it. I was just completely lost. <laughs> but I, I guess you're right. Like she stopped. At least she's either stopped riding the moon or she's she's yeah. stepping out of that. Yeah, yeah, no. I, she definitely. She just looked. Well, they are. They are. Both of the pair of them looked malnourished through the whole freaking episode. Oh, yeah. Um, and she was just sweating profusely and almost delirious, wandering around on this rooftop. And there's like three other boys up there that just shoved her in a closet and I locked the door. I didn't think they were bullying her. They were literally just tidying up and she was running around having her speech mm. and sort of like kicking the trash everywhere and just, yeah. I guess she just became quite nihilistic. Yeah. And then she just then and there got on the kids' nerves. So they just shoved, just her, in the shoved her in a closet and shut the door. <laughs> I guess they come to an understanding, mm. both, both knowing the price you have to pay and the pressure they're under. Again, you're probably better place to talk about this than than me because I totally switched off at this point. <laughs> I was just like, "What is this?" And then it, there's a point where it comes to the big, the, the finals, as it were. I yeah, the the mock exams or the final exams, and flunks his mock exam because he has no kittens to kill. Mm-hmm. And the family sees on of- him in a flash. And all the flowers are falling down onto the desk while he's trying to study, and he can hear meowing outside. And he makes he he, he makes a a request to the teacher, and then the teacher tells the mother, and then the mother goes searching mm. outside yeah, in the I shrubbery. Guess the pressure and the fact mm-hmm. that he's been killing cats cracks him right in the exam. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure they go back to the flat after he's he's failed, and it gets back to the beatings again, everything again. And he starts talking to his teacher, his tutor, and give, reveals the truth to her. I thought, because I thought he did that when things were going really well. I thought he did that at the meal where they were chanting, like, yay, love and happiness. Because she's like, oh, you're doing really well. And he's like, yeah, thanks. I'm, I've found out. The Do truth. you want me to she's tell like, you a what? secret? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has a, a heart to heart with his tutor. And it's at this point that she decides that he needs to see a psychiatrist or something. Yeah, because obviously the, the it's not the type of family who are going to take that well, huh? No, And they no. get pretty on the defence. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I'm right in thinking, basically, because he takes that test and doesn't do well and cracks and he's run out of kittens, he basically goes street hunting for kittens. Yes. For cats. Cats. And that's where he gets caught. Yeah, trying to poison one with um, rat poison mm. and a tin of tuna. The sort of neighbourhood turns on him a bit. Mm-hmm. That this day, is where that is... it feels quite anticlimactic, I suppose, this episode. Yep. Because he just confronts his mum. Mm-hmm. Like he's fighting with his mum and it becomes like a physical fight. But it, it, he I almost tries, it's... like he's trying to strangle her to death at one point, doesn't it? Mm, I guess, yeah, I guess he's tempted to sacrifice her. Yeah. Uh, stroke, he's had enough, he's cracked. Yeah, and he's, he's like, why don't you him. love me? Why won't you look at me? Why won't you care for me? Why won't you... Mm. And it's quite it is quite harrowing actually. Yeah, I guess this is the the emotional climax. As it, were. Mm. it was quite quite uh, challenging to watch, I guess, in in the in the right sense rather than the wrong sense. Yeah, in it came it back was... down to the drama and emotion. Mm. And I guess we just cut to like a five months later. It, almost, it, there's another cat, isn't there? That's having more babies. But the kids basically. I don't know if he's dropped out of school, but he he has become the handyman's apprentice. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's like after the results, after like college applications, and he's just found something he can do once he's mm-hmm. happy. His place with. And in just the no world. Pressure for now. He, he, you know, he's a kid. He can just yeah. do this for now at least. But yeah, certainly, yeah, I guess you're right. Found his place in the world. Yeah, rather it's than time. just being abused. And it, the mother seems happy with that. She's making them both food and. She brings the food along and, you know, they're not killing kittens anymore. It's kind of a happy ending. I guess so, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I was and the, 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 the way that we're, we're struggling to unravel this ending is exactly how I felt about watching it. Because it just happened. It didn't make any sense. They had that big ruckus on the kitchen floor 
where he was struggling was strangling her oh. and then the cat in the cage meowed and they stare over and it's given birth to kittens and then he's oh, the apprentice I I forgot about that i don't know if there's like a rebirth you know what i mean like a yeah metaphor. possibly yeah some sort of metaphor but um yeah and then he's the apprentice to the the the, the kitchen the you know yeah the handy guy Cool. <laughs> I think this would have been better if we could have just dropped the parallel universe bullshit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just have him killing cats because of pure stress. I mean, I, I guess it it just didn't tie in well enough. Like, it's fine it just... to have him this belief that if he sacrifices this innocent thing, he'll get the, the results. But they didn't yeah. really play that out well at no. all. Like, the first episode made sense. Mm -hmm. This, to me, had no sense it was nonsensical. It just the, the the whole thing with the kittens turning into flowers. I guess I thought that was to show time passing. So he wasn't doing it one a day, right? It was it was every now mm -hmm. and then. But the, what about the flowers falling on the dead? The, you know, out the sky on his desk, and um... I, I think they were just to represent the cats. No, like they they, they couldn't show dead cats falling all over him. In his, in his mind and it wasn't it wasn't like there was loads of flowers i think there was like two flowers he was and well there was the one where the flowers fell out the ceiling while he was doing the exam mm. there was another one that turned up sometime some other time quite randomly just like the head of it and then there was the one where he was burying the kitten in the flower pot mm. i mean um, in a roundabout way i feel like the whole episode is just um, I've got to stop using the word crack. <laughs> I've used it mm -hmm. like 10 times. <laughs> it, it, you know what I mean? Everything's a metaphor. Everything's literally this kid cracks under the pressure, mm. which might sum up the entire show. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> the synopsis is about parental pressures and societal pressures on but, children. But what he was willing to do to try and escape that, mm. like how far a psychosis he could go. I don't know if uh, a lot of films get foreign remakes. Let this kid grow up a bit. He'd, he'd make a great Joker if they were to remake the sort of uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Oh I thought yeah, this yeah. Kid was great. Yeah, he was. He was exceptional in it. I thought he could do like kind of pathetic whimpering. He could mm -hmm. do genuinely, genuine like uh, sympathetic concern. His mm -hmm. little smile was quite sweet when he smiled. Yeah. He was Heartfelt terrifying. Moments. It's yeah, terrifying when he turned on his maniacal stare. And he's uh -huh. a skinny kid, like you said. He shouldn't be yeah. that scary. No. Whoever this kid is, get him some work. In yeah. 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 I definitely, I, he could be a, a, a Thai joker. I, I thought that was, uh, you could say that for the girl as well. She was she was terrifying. The mm -hmm. other one with the parallel abilities. Um, the bully, yeah, the bullying was done well in this. Mm. Like that other kid's bullying. Like it, it felt like... Oh, just vicious. You know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I really didn't enjoy this one. It's, and I, I feel like it's purely the story. I kind of like the acting. I like the mum. Yep. I didn't like yep. the mum character. I like the, the, uh, well, the acting was great. And a lot of the nuances were kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Just the overarching story didn't really piece together. No. <laughs> um, and if it did, I'd like someone to write in. Yeah, simple bullet points. In, yeah, in in the comments, if you've got, if you can make any sense of what we are trying to describe here, or you've seen it for yourself, please enlighten us because mm. there is I mean, not assuming much. Assuming there was more complicity to it, then yeah, there's not much that, that, that. I, like I did my research on the internet afterwards, and the, even IMDb struggles to decipher it. It's hard to find. No, not a lot of people mm. do know this. Nobody. People just talk about the facts. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find some reviews to see the general consensus, whether it's it's liked or not. There's and very, very little out there. there yeah. We'll be the go-to. We'll have a hit. Uh, what do you reckon? What? Uh, I mean, I definitely like this more than the first episode, just because it engaged me more. Mm. I guess it just hit that point a little beyond the halfway mark, where I sort of went, ah, uh, it's not going to get story-wise more refined or better. Yeah, like I sort of hit the point just beyond halfway when I realised I'm not going to be that content with not necessarily explanation, but with a rounded story and events. Mm -hmm. The beginning, middle, and end. Mm. 
Do you know what the next uh, episode is or anything about it? I have got no idea. I've not done any, I've not looked. I should have watched it by now because it's normally my Sunday, but we hadn't done this Sunday one. Sunday treat. Just, yeah, just, I was just oh. like, I can't watch two of these back to back and have to remember two of them. I'll, I'll stick with the one I've seen and try and, yeah, get the, get get it out of the way first before it's slightly I move on to the next one. It shaves off a few minutes and 93 minutes. Oh, that's good. And uh, I'll tell you a little. I'll tell you the little written blurb mm-hmm. where you want to go in blind. Yeah, no, yeah, go on. The last day of Molly, when her okay. daughter takes her own life, a mother uses uh, nascent technology to delve inside her mind and better understand the reasons behind her death. Oh, so another hell. cheery one. Yeah, there is a theme here. Bringing the joy. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, something to look for. You can treat yourself next Sunday night. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> My dad's down as well, so maybe he will would like to enjoy watching it with me. Lovely stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there we go. Uh, I would give this a. Uh, we were marking them out of five, weren't we? This one is definitely a two. What was? What was? Do you remember what Mother's Remote was? Uh, no. It's probably two. Hmm. Uh. I, if assuming I gave Mother's Remote a two, maybe I even gave it a one. Mm. This see, this needs to go above it, but I don't want to give it a high ranking, which just means whatever Mother's Remote was, 0.5 more. <laughs> okay. Uh, you've, you, I'll tell you what, though, Scott, you've certainly chose <laughs> or chosen a really, really interesting series to start this series of podcasts off on. Yeah, um, it's the last. If it's the last series you do of it, you'll know why quite soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I'm glad it's five get... episodes. Like I said, yeah. when we started watching Mother's Remote. Is it, is it Remote. five? Oh, my God. I thought it was yeah. four. Oh, no, it's five. Oi. Yeah. Oi. Well, okay, well. We'll be on the halfway mark I'm, I'm, this, I'm, this time next wrap. Next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in for the long haul. We're definitely going to see it through to the end. But Jesus, if it's any, it can't be any worse than this. wrap it up around there i want to thank you for listening and i hope you enjoyed join us again next episode and until then have a great day i need to loo mum <laughs> <laughs>